Hello, happy Sunday afternoon. It is at the end of a very long and busy weekend that I've had, but I wanted to spend a few minutes making a quick video to let you know that my interview that was supposed to take place last Wednesday has been rescheduled for Tuesday due to an emergency on the part of the interviewee, not me. I suppose my entire life is kind of an emergency because I've got things stacked from the morning to evening, so I don't know, I'm always in, in slight emergency mode for that reason. My first three interviewees were so great. They were willing to do interviews with me without asking too many questions like, why do you want to make interviews? And also they were available and that was great, but most people are very busy and hard to pin down, even if they're really willing and um, don't know why I want to make videos of Roswell people. Well, why do I want to make videos of Roswell people? Only partly because the setting of my books takes place in Roswell. The other reason is that interviewing people is kind of like writing books. It is a way to understand people and their perspectives. People have wildly different perspectives. I'm not sure if you've realized that in life. You can have multiple people witnessing the same events or taking part in the same events and they have completely different ideas of what happened during the during the events that they're all witnessing and what is interesting to me is that there are people who are pretty assured that they have a perfect grasp on reality and that if somebody's perspective differs from theirs there that other person is clearly in the wrong but we're all perceiving reality in different ways because our brains change reality for us. I can't explain it, but sometimes it's like you can be in the same room with somebody and it's like you're watching two entire different movies. Even if you're actors in those movies, you are acting in different films. And that's the way it comes across to me when you talk to people or... Um, a lot of times you will come across that online. You have people who are experiencing the same realities, maybe the same political reality that everybody else is, but their perspective on it is wildly different. And I, I think that in a sense, social media trains us um, to be certain types of people. So if we're... Um, alt-right, we will have a different movie played for us. Or if we are progressive, we'll have a different movie play for us. And I think some of that is orchestrated. But this also just happens in reality that, uh, that the actual physical reality around us is still filtered through our perceptions. <sighs> That's the long answer of why I want to conduct these interviews and even why I write at all to understand these different perspectives. I hope that I do a reasonable job of that with my characters. That's very important to me to try to get into the heads of other people who are different from me. I don't think that I would want to write books with only um, myself as the main character. I, you can see that in a lot of authors. They they tend to project themselves into their characters, especially if they have a main protagonist that comes back in all of their books. And it's really just um, the, the author <laughs> who is narrating their books and narrating reality because maybe they, they can't get into other people's perspectives or they don't recognize that they aren't getting into other people's perspectives. And I actually think when I was a younger author, I used to always have at least um, one character who was a lot like me without even realizing it that the rest of the world isn't at well okay I think I always knew that <laughs> the world just did not um, see the world in the weird awkward way that I see the world when people say that we create our own reality that we uh, have our own truth that's what they mean. They mean that people are perceiving through their own five senses, through their brain, and their brain is going to perceive things based off of various factors, obviously, uh, such as 
their, whether they are male or female, um, what culture they grew up in, and also whether they've gone through life trauma. Life trauma can actually completely change your perspective in that a lot of people who have gone through trauma actually believe that the world is out to get them and they approach the world with that kind of bristling hostility or even with kind of a pathetic victim mentality because they have experienced a lot of trauma and that is the way they are perceiving reality. They are perceiving reality as a threat, that anybody could be a threat to them and that is quite literally the reality that they're creating for themselves and sometimes when you create that reality for yourself, you actually put yourself into situations that can create more trauma because that is what you are seeking, that is what you're looking for. I don't believe that reality is actually subjective. There is clearly an objective reality, but we all perceive that reality differently. So for example, I mean, this is a, an obvious example. I was singing in the choir at the confirmation mass today and it was a very long mass, but I mean, there were a lot of people there. There are a number of uh, young people who are um, being, conf who were confirmed. And so from my perspective, um, the mass seemed really long and beautiful at the same time, but I was very distant from it because I, I was taking part in the Mass by singing in the choir. I was not being confirmed. So somebody who is being confirmed is going to have a completely different perspective of that Mass, although they might also have thought it was very long <laughs> because these kind of Masses where you have so many people there are naturally going to take longer. And my son is sneaking up and I think he's going to try to video well, no. <laughs> what if I turned around the camera then? No, no, then... <laughs> but you were literally walking up. Uh, so oh. what is his perspective in that moment? When I am talking to the camera and he has it in his head that he's going to somehow sneak up on me, what was your perspective at that moment, Sam? Um. How are you perceiving the world at that moment that you thought that you would oh, sneak up on my video? Oh, you thought it would be funny. Yeah. Yeah. Why would, why would it be funny? Because you used to do this when I did periscopes when you were young. It might add extra spice to the video, too. Well, here. Can I turn the camera angle around? No. I can't? Mm -hmm. I can't actually put you on the video? Yeah. Only your voice. Well, I would have video bombed. Oh, but see, I can video bomb. Watch this. <laughs> totally video bombed. Okay. Was that okay with you? What? Was that video bomb okay with you? I guess. <laughs> he says he gets it. I won't post it if you don't want it. I can even cut that clip. Because I'm very concerned with other people's perspectives in this video. In this particular video, that's my focus. You're okay? Yeah. <laughs> I was pretty sure he'd be okay because he used to video bomb me. When he was, gosh, I don't know, 12 years old, he used to video bomb me. And I'm like, hmm, should I really allow my minor child to do that and be on camera? But uh, thankfully, Periscope is long gone and those videos have ceased to exist, so it doesn't matter because he might be embarrassed. Although I have to say that regardless of what his perspective is about it now, I, since I have gone back on Facebook, one of the only interesting things about Facebook, aside from actually seeing that my friends and family are still on there, um, is watching old videos of him doing his Rubik's Cube because he learned the algorithms and learned to do the Rubik's Cube very quickly. I don't know what his fastest time was, but it was, I was going to say a few seconds, but I'm probably exaggerating because I was, uh, you know, proud mom at that point when he's like, Ch -ch 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 -ch, boom, and then it was done because <laughs> that's amazing, right? 
uh, I mean, I'm, I'm a child of the 80s, so it does seem amazing to me because everybody wanted to crack the Rubik's Cube, but I didn't know the Rubik's Cube algorithm. I could maybe get like three sides done, but the whole thing, <laughs> never really happened. But apparently it's all down to a mathematical algorithm, how you, how you um, solve it. And there are more than one ways to solve it. So there you are. And uh, nowadays, of course, uh, uh, in the 80s, you could buy, you could purchase uh, pamphlets that would show you how to solve it. But nowadays, of course, there are videos that are instructional. Yes, and <laughs> unfortunately, my videos aren't very instructional. But if you really want to start feeling um, like you don't have any grasp on reality, maybe you'll watch my videos because that's kind of what I'm saying right now is that we none of us really have a full grasp on reality because we view the world differently. I This is something that actually really unnerves me is recognizing that I may not be seeing reality for what it is. It really unnerves me. It's always unnerved me. I don't know if that is a flaw in my character because I see other people who are perfectly happy with accepting their perception of reality as being reality and they have no qualms about that. That's almost like self-protectionary in a way that whatever their perception of is what they witnessed is actually God's truth. And anybody who disagrees with that is clearly crazy and you know you get in a lot of battle of the sexes when it comes to that because one of the biggest differences in perspectives is between the male and female mind because they process things differently and so you'll have the man who really thinks well my reality is definitely the logical real one and the women are like that's not what I experienced in that moment so to me that's not actually true. So which one is true? That's the big question. Um, I think that until we get out of our physical brains where we're processing this information and, and our brains are faulty, clearly um, mine may be faultier than others. I don't know. But until we get out of these faulty brains, then we won't know. I have often envisioned or imagined that if I were to like leave this body, I would just sort of enter this cloud of omniscience where all of those things that I couldn't grasp and understand in on this side of reality, on this side of the veil would become clear and I would be finally able to relax and understand and just, just exist as this sort of omniscience if that's a good way of putting it, I don't know. But um, when I think about how we perceive reality, I like to think of it as light, okay? So light changes the way we view the world. We can't actually see anything and, and being that most of us have sight, I know there are blind people out there, most of us have sight. And that is one that I would say would be a primary um, factor in how we process is what we're seeing, not just what we're hearing, although that makes a difference and smelling of course has a place in that as well. But I, I would say that sight is one of the most important senses, but our sight changes based off of light. So if we see somebody that looks dark and scary and old, maybe it's just the way the shadows are playing on their face. And if they were to step into the light, they would look, you know, um, instead of 50 years old and an old craggy creep, creepy person, they might look like a 30 year old who's happy and blessed. I don't know, but this is, this is the way we, our reality is changed by light, okay? Kind of like, <laughs> what is reality in making a video? When I film out in the shed, I don't really have a lot of natural light. 
and so I use um, background lighting. I don't like to use the overhead lighting because it's fluorescent and it looks really awful. It makes um, my skin look yellow and I don't like that. So I'll often just turn on like the, just the lamps that are in the shed, but it's still very dim and cast shadows on my face. So I'll put brightening on it in the, in the, um, I, I only use my, uh, editing software on my camera because I don't have anything more sophisticated than that but I'll put some brightening on it but what happens when you add brightening is that you lose a lot of the background contrast so all of a sudden my background um, doesn't look as nice as it should and everything sort of it is um, more blurred instead of having some sharp contrast and you start adding contrast to it to make it look better and then you're like well that really isn't doing anything for my complexion maybe I ought to put on a filter and there is one filter in my that just comes in the editing software that kind of fades out the background and kind of almost puts a spotlight on the face kind of it's not really strong but I've used that filter when I've had to use um, the brightening because it kind of brings that background back in instead of feeling like it's just bleeding out into nowhere. And so that is how light can change reality. But what is the truth? So what, what does somebody really look like? Um, you know, like our teeth, for example, are crystalline structures and the light bounces off those crystalline structures and will actually create whiteness in the teeth. So in this light where I don't have a lot of direct bright light, it's, I actually don't even have any lights on, but um, I have the afternoon light sort of filtering through the trees outside. So my teeth don't look bright and white like they might in brighter sunlight, but they don't look completely yellow but they might if I was in dimmer light because I don't have light reflecting on my teeth. So it's, it, <laughs> that, that is how light changes reality. And it's definitely a perception, but what is, which one is the real look? Which one is the real vision of reality? I don't know, <laughs> is it bright sunlight? or is it in dim light, which is the reality? I don't know. That's all I'm trying to say. <laughs> and I think I'm too tired to really um, come up with some very scientific or coherent thoughts on it. Um, but <laughs> that's, that's about it. You see, and what changes when I play with my hair and put it up instead of having it down? Hmm, I don't know. Anyway, I am going to close this video now in, well, actually in a minute, because all I really wanted to say was that my interview has been postponed until Tuesday. And to just give you a general gist of why I wanted to make those interviews in the first place, because people fascinate me and I want to get their perspectives. I, and um, all the rest is just me rambling on because I'm tired, but I gotta do other things and I probably won't get to my accordion today, which is really sad to me when life gets too busy to play the accordion. And um, yeah, because the only way to get good at something is to do it all the time and to, <sighs> I was getting really frustrated with my accordion last week because I was trying to play, well, I always try to play songs, um, play the songs on my accordion to the actual songs. So I'll cue them up on my Spotify or I'll play them on YouTube, whatever. Either way, um, sometimes I want the visual of watching somebody play as well. But my frustration at trying to keep up with the people playing is just ridiculous. It occurred to me that, um, you know, these Mexican accordion players, they play so fast, but Spanish is also one of these languages where you have more syllables per minute than almost any language in the world. I think it's second in the world or something like that. I read that somewhere. Um, so maybe they're just putting as many notes as they can per minute because it's just natural for them. I don't know, but 
it's crazy to me sometimes because I just don't think I'm coordinated enough to play. But I try and I try, and the more I try, the faster I get, and then I get frustrated when I still can't keep up. But you know what? You know how I know that I've been practicing a lot is that I have like this big muscle here. This is the side where you know where I do the bellows, so I, I tend to, I have this like big shoulder muscle here from that. You might not think I'm very large, but you know, I, I think it's I think it's pretty reasonably large. Um, it shows that I've been um, pushing and pulling on the bellows a lot. <laughs> That's all. So have a great rest of your Sunday because I have other things I need to do, and I'm going to say goodbye.